Hey there, Mr. Redder here. Welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled People Stories. Our first story we'll be reading today. I'm testifying against my sister to make her lose custody of her stepkids. After that, take a pay cut and lose benefits or be fired? Okay, have fun reworking your entire system. And after that, boyfriend is trying to force me to get rid of my horse. Now for every thumbs up this video gets, one Karen loses in court. You'll be the one paying my legal fees, Reddit boy. So please smash that like button and subscribe and turn on notifications for new stories from Reddit every single day. I'm testifying against my sister to make her lose custody of her stepkids. I'm not going to be shy about this. My sister sucks. She's a horrible, self-centered person who thinks that she's the main character. She's not only a horrible person, she is a step monster. She married this guy who's a real pushover three years ago. He has two kids who are 10 and 6. My sister constantly complains about them, saying things like the 6-year-old is gross because he sips too loudly or has stained clothing. For the love of goodness, he's 6. That's what a kid is supposed to do. And she's so mean to the 10-year-old. She acts straight up jealous of her. I've caught her taunting her that daddy loves my sister more than her. She is horrible. I've straight up called her out after trying to talk to her a million times. At Christmas, she was saying that it would be nice to have the kids there, and I said, why? You hate them. This was when everything was almost over and she had been bragging to her friends that her husband had spent more on her than on his daughter. A fight ensued. My parents reprimanded me, but my cousins took my side and called her out, noting every moment that they had witnessed her being horrible. Her husband obviously took her side and said that she was a wonderful stepmother and that the kids love her. To which I said that was a lie, as I had consoled them countless times after they were taunted by my sister. They left and we haven't talked since. One day I was running errands and run into my stepnephews who were with their mother. I had never met her, and honestly, she is wonderful. We decided to have some coffee. While the kids were playing, she asked me how her kids behaved, etc. I said they were wonderful, and then I just spilled the beans on my sister. How awful she was. What I've heard her say to the kids. The inaction of her ex-husband. By the end, she was horrified. She said the kids didn't like her, but she always chucked it up to my sister being the new woman in their father's life. She said the kids never really said anything even when she asked. I then told her that I was very concerned for the kids, as my sister had straight up told the 10-year-old that it would be better if she disappeared from her father's life. Their mother saw Red and asked me if I'd be willing to testify. She said that this was unacceptable and she would be taking their father to court again. I said I would recount the events that I witnessed and could ask my cousins who witnessed a lot too. She was very grateful. I asked my cousins who were all willing to recount the events. Word got around to my parents and by extension my sister and they've been calling me the biggest jerk on the planet who would betray family on a whim. Am I the jerk? Not the jerk. Clearly, the kid's well-being is being neglected by their father. I'm normally not a fan of people injecting themselves into someone else's relationship, but you're looking out for these kids, and there's nothing wrong at all with that. Well, what would you do in this situation? Would you testify against your own sister or not? Please let us know. I'd do a lot more to her than just testify. Take a pay cut and lose benefits or be fired? Okay, have fun reworking your entire system. I work as a logistical consultant and have done so for the past seven years. Most of my work is short-term contracts to update and optimize logistical systems for manufacturers and delivery businesses. I do have a couple of long-term contracts with repeat clients and this story is about one such client. I got a job offer six years ago with a friend who inherited his family's machine shop. His father is a brilliant man but not business savvy in the slightest and the entire business was teetering on bankruptcy. My main job there was optimizing the production method for both existing contracts and future contracts. This was my first long-term contract, but I had been doing similar work for a few years and had gotten a couple of patents for producing some intricate parts before getting this job. In the contract negotiation, I made sure that any patents developed in the course of my work would be retained completely by me. The contract term was five years before re-evaluating. It took a lot of time and work but the company became rather successful, especially considering the condition my friend inherited it. Then 2020 happened, and after about a year of trying to stay afloat, 
my friend sold to some entrepreneur who wanted to get into the industry. In the months prior to the sale, the new boss was trying to familiarize himself with the business. Being in charge of logistics, I had given him a tour of the place and informed him of the patented methods used. This was happening right around the time my contract reevaluation was supposed to happen and I asked whether I'd be negotiating with him or the new boss. He realized I didn't want to be stuck in a contract I would negotiate with him if he wasn't going to be my boss and he assured me that he'd make sure my new contract would be negotiated with the new boss. The new boss started restructuring and laying off most salaried employees and cutting benefits like vacation and sick time as soon as the acquisition went through. I was not a fan of this new boss since he, in addition to this, was a jerk with zero experience and refused to acknowledge that fact. He did not understand what exactly my job was and thought it was unnecessary. I could tell he was just waiting for my contract negotiation. Fast forward about a month into the new regime and enter the crap show that was my negotiation. He was of the opinion that I was overpaid and inefficient. He all but said that I was unnecessary. My only options were to either essentially become a part-time contractor with an effective 70% cut to what I was making and none of my benefits or be fired. When he gave me the ultimatum, I was beyond shocked. I immediately contacted my lawyer and he told me the contract was absolutely insulting. Needless to say, I chose option number two. Over the course of my time there, I had filed two patents that were extensively used by the company. With shorter contracts, I typically negotiate for better royalty rate than benefits or salary, but since this business was both with my friend and supposed to be long term, I opted for negotiating benefits. About a week after the negotiations were completed, I told the new boss we had need to discuss royalties before my term was officially over. He was not amused and was dismissive. After enough pressing from me, we had a meeting with lawyers present. What's important to know is that one patent is extensively used in the production of an electrical device for the company's biggest client. The royalties deal written up by my lawyer was the standard one I use for most companies, which is more expensive than my previous contract. New Boss was shocking and fuming, saying how this was completely ridiculous and bordering on extortion considering how much more expensive it would be and how not being able to use the patent would mean he'd lose clients while shifting production methods. I told him that he had in total six months of time to figure out what it was that I did and to familiarize himself with the company and the fact that I had told him when I gave him the tour that I was the patent holder. He also could have asked for a quote and my usual rates. The first meeting ended very abruptly after this and three days later he came with an insulting counter offer where I'd be employed again but with far less benefits than I originally had. I told him I don't want to work for him and that he either pays my rate or change production methods. This would entail replacing a lot of tooling and equipment and retraining workers. He threatened to sue and got rather belligerent, so I told him I'd see him in court if that was the case. Otherwise, he knows my offer and has my contact info. He quickly realized that even in the unlikely event of the court deciding in his favor that he'd still lose a lot of money in legal fees. After the meeting, I told my lawyer to draft a cease and desist and have it ready for when the contract expires. New boss started looking for my replacement. He had not stopped production or even told the clients about it during this time period. The day after my term ended, I sent the cease and desist letter and production stopped. He lost most clients, most employees just jumped ship, and last week he declared bankruptcy. Hope he learned his lesson. Never do over the logistics guy. Boyfriend is trying to force me to get rid of my horse. Me, 24 female, and my boyfriend, 26, have been dating for around nine months. I've been riding horses since around four years old when I started taking lessons. When I was 10, I started helping out this girl at the stable with her horse, Lady. At 12, she told me she had to sell due to time and interest and asked me if my parents wanted to buy Lady. Luckily for me, my parents were able to buy her and she's been mine ever since. She's my bestest friend and I love her a lot. When I started to date my boyfriend, I was very honest with the fact that my horse takes a lot of my time and he was fine with this. When single, I could spend like 3-4 to four hours a day in the stable, but as we started dating, I cut this down. To about 3 hours every other day as this is roughly how long it takes for me to do all of the cleaning, preparing food and riding. Also, most of my friends are at the stable, which obviously means that this is also social for me. 
The other days I would not ride and try to spend less time talking, which would make it about an hour. After about six months, he told me I spent too much time at the stable and I should prioritize my relationship more and somehow his family got involved and was saying that it was strange to prioritize the way I did. I wasn't comfortable with this, but I am a bit of a pushover, so I agreed. At first, this meant cutting down time at the stable, but it has evolved into cutting down riding days. Now I ride about two days a week, and the rest I'm simply there to do the basics. All of this as quickly as I can, because otherwise I know he'll be annoyed and upset for days and give me the silent treatment. I know my horse isn't really suffering from not being ridden as often as before, but I still feel very guilty that I'm always rushing around her. Then last night, he told me it was time to sell Lady. I laughed at him and asked if he was serious. He was. I told him no and he said I needed to start prioritizing this relationship more and I said that I've done nothing but prioritize this relationship. We argued about it and he apparently thinks I can just put her down as she's old anyways. I was furious at this and told him that was absolutely not happening and I would never sell her. He said that any reasonable person would sell or put down their horse in favor of their boyfriend and the only reason I wouldn't is because I only hang out with other insane horse people. So I come to you, reasonable people of Reddit. Am I the jerk? Edit. So I never expected this to get as much attention as it did. I'm very overwhelmed and thankful for all of your kind comments and messages. I'm currently sitting with Lady in her stable crying my eyes out because this has been such a wake-up call for me. My boyfriend left to visit his family and friends in his old town earlier today before I posted, so for everyone worried, all is well for now and I will handle this ASAP. First, I need to go home and sleep. Thank you all for being wonderful. Not the jerk. Your boyfriend sounds controlling. You've worked hard to compromise with him, but he keeps moving the line until he eventually gets everything he wants and you have sacrificed everything important to you. A lot of horrible partners start this cycle by trying to isolate their partner. You have a whole support network at the barn and he wants you to give all that up in addition to your horse who is like a member of your family. This is super messed up and a huge red flag. I know it really hurts, but be grateful he's shown you who he really is and how he doesn't prioritize or frankly care about your feelings and well-being. I'd run, not walk away from this guy. He sees something you love and wants to take it away from you. That should be enough right there to warrant a red flag, but I really love this comment about the support system. Keep them around you and leave him. So many red flags. OP, this guy is not the one for you. A supportive partner encourages your interests and appreciates that that's what makes you happy. This one is just me, me, me. You deserve better. Yup, think of how much happier you'd be if you had a boyfriend who shared your love for horses. Your boyfriend doesn't love you the way you are. He's trying to change you. Don't let him. Stay who you are and do what you love doing. Your relationship should not get in the way of that. Well, what do you think? Should OP pick her horse or her boyfriend? Please let us know. I think we need to put down that boyfriend to be honest. Guy sounds really sick. Am I the jerk for telling my brother-in-law it's cringe to continue saying he's child-free whenever I ask him to watch my son? Oh, here we go. My wife, who's 27, and I, who am also 27, have a four-year-old son. We've been having an incredibly busy work schedule of the last two years and family's been doing a great job helping out with our son. We usually have members of my in-laws take our son whenever we have a work trip or a shift coming up. From my wife's mom to her sister to her dad, except for my 31-year-old brother-in-law, wife's brother. He's made it clear he is just not interested in spending time with his nephew. Keep saying that the reason for that is because he's actually child-free. For so many emergencies, he has turned me and my wife away when we begged him to watch our son and he didn't even budge or apologize for his attitude. It all came to a head a couple days ago. I had a work meeting while my wife was out of town and my in-laws were attending a wedding, so no one was free to watch my son except for brother-in-law. I showed up to his place and told him I was desperate for help and needed him to just watch my son for two hours. He refused, even suggested I take him with me to work, but that's not a good suggestion. I begged him and he just said no. I had enough. I confronted him and asked why. Does he not like his nephew? And he just threw it out that, no, it's just that I'm child free. Excuse, which made me lose it. I told him to just stop because it's cringe of him to keep saying this and using it as an excuse to be unsupportive of me and his sister and cold towards his nephew. 
I told him he should really do better and stop being so negative. But he got mad and said I had no right to disrespect his lifestyle and choices. But it's the attitude that gets me. We had an exchange of words where he said my son isn't his responsibility whatsoever. Then I left. He complained to my in-laws and they called me out for disrespecting their son and treating him like that. They insisted that he's not responsible for my son and I shouldn't expect so much from him then guilt him about it. They wanted me to apologize and my wife said I should, but he was about as helpful and supportive as a rock. So I decided I will take my time before I consider apologizing. Am I the jerk? You're the jerk. For goodness sake, how entitled are you? Your brother-in-law has been clear about who he is and what he won't do. But because that's not convenient to you, you feel you can disrespect it. This is a failure of your organization. How can you guys not have a sitter? I'm a single dad and never ended up in your situation because I planned for it. I bet they don't have any paid sitters on their roster. I mean, how on earth could you not want to spend 8 hours babysitting a fussy toddler for free because they're just so cute? Right? Who wouldn't want to provide free babysitting 24-7 when the toddler is this cute? Who? Not serious. You're the jerk. I don't care about the child-free thing, OP. What he said isn't the problem because he doesn't need an excuse to not babysit someone else's kid. He's your kid and your responsibility. Even if you have emergencies, is it so hard to pay for a sitter? The entitlement and irresponsibility here is jaw-dropping. You are not arranging proper childcare for your son, although it's shockingly easy. You are not planning for emergencies. You are forcing someone who is A, unpaid, B, unwilling, and C, unhappy to babysit your son without consideration to their needs and wants. You are taking others' free work for granted. You are disrespecting people who gave you tremendous favors. You are blaming others for your lack of planning. You are disrespecting a reasonable boundary that was expressed multiple times. That's what good aunts and uncles do especially ones who don't have their own kids because they have so much free time to just sit around. Why wouldn't they want to spend it with their siblings' toddlers for free? Not serious. Side note, as someone who gets paid to hang with toddlers and doesn't have my own kids, toddlers are cool. Would not kick it with them without compensation. Compensation mandatory. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or brother-in-law? Please let us know. Sometimes people start having kids and all of a sudden an entitlement switch just flips on in their brain. Am I the jerk for telling my dad that I don't want him walking my cousin down the aisle? My, 16 female, cousin, 23 female, is getting married in November. She's the only daughter of my dad's brother. For some context, we don't get along at all. She bullied me while growing up, and after my uncle passed, she tried to steal my dad. He never allowed it, but made time for both of us, but to this day, my cousin still says that I was a jerk for not letting her have a parental figure, which is not true. Neither my mom or dad allowed her to mistreat me, but there's so much a parent can do. She used to do it while they weren't watching too, and I was too afraid to tell them because I could see how important it was for my dad to have a relationship with her, so I kept quiet. While the bullying decreased, it never went away. She still makes fun of me, because I'm single, because I'm dumb, etc., when she got engaged, she excluded me from the bridal party and it wouldn't matter if it wasn't for the fact that she included the rest of the family, her mom's side and my brother's. My dad found this suspicious and things got a lot worse with her funny comments that I'll probably attend alone, that she didn't think the bridesmaid dress would be flattering on me because of my size, etc. She took my parents to dinner last week and asked my dad to walk her down the aisle and I don't know what excuse he gave her but after that, he came to my room and asked me if I would be okay with this. I was honest. I said no. I told him that she made most of my life heck. Even before my uncle passed, and since I was his only daughter, I thought it would be an experience between us. But I knew she would ask, and I only wanted to make my feelings clear, but that at the end of the day, the decision was his, and I'll accept whatever he decides because I know how important she is for him. He told me that he loved her as a daughter too, and that was it. Well, my dad told her no, and now my cousin is blaming me, telling everyone that I forced him, that I was a jealous little jerk, and that if I don't fix it, then I wouldn't be welcomed at her wedding. My mom and my aunt sided with her that it was a low blow from my part, and most of her family is saying that it wasn't fair. My mom called me yesterday and told me that I should have lied because this was an important moment for her. 
My brothers told her that if she didn't stop the harassment, then they'll drop from the party too, and I can't help but think that I caused a big mess. Not the jerk, and I'm glad your brothers have your back. To be honest, the biggest jerk in this story is your mother, closely followed by your cousin. Absolutely. OP, your mom shouldn't back the bully. Show her this post and tell her to be better. She's a jerk, unlike your dad and brothers. Also, you didn't cause drama. Your bully cousin did. Do not go to that wedding. Not the jerk. Yeah, honestly, forget the wedding. Why would you want to go and celebrate someone who treats you so horribly? Why does there appear to be so many in this family that think it's normal or appropriate when an adult complains to others in their family about a teenage cousin? I'd skip the wedding too, even if the bride got her way. She'd still just spend the whole night going on about how terrible OP is and almost ruined her wedding. Am I the jerk for making my girlfriend pump her own gas? Since me, 28 male, and my girlfriend, 27 female, started dating, anytime she drove and had to get gas, I would pump it for her. Well, last week, she took me to work because her car does better in the snow than mine. When she came to pick me up from work, she was wearing pajamas, which were short, with a long sleeve button up. She even wore her house shoes. I was embarrassed for my coworkers to see her like that, so when she stopped for gas to teach her a lesson, I told her my back was sore and she could pump it. She said it was too cold and she wanted me to do it. She's the moron who wore shorts. I stood my ground. She pumped her own gas but wouldn't talk to me during the drive. We pass a sushi place on our way home, so I asked her to stop. She said no, but I kept persisting and she finally said okay. She told me I would have to run in, so I did. When I came out, she had left. I told my brother because I needed a ride home, he gave me a ride home but said I was a jerk and I deserved it. If there's any interest, I can update with what happened when I got home, but it doesn't seem super relevant to my question, so I don't see the need to add it. Edit. Update. First, to answer questions. She pays for her own gas. She didn't get out of the car, but she doesn't have tinted windows, and I didn't expect her to dress up. I did expect her to not look like a bum, though. I'm still reading comments, so I'll add stuff that gets asked a lot to this, and I'll try to respond to others. Now for what happened when I got home. We live in a fairly rural area, and I work about 35 to 45 minutes away. Apparently, my brother called my mom, who then called my girlfriend and told her what I had said. This did include me calling her a moron and saying how embarrassed I was. When I got back home, my girlfriend had moved all my clothes and belongings into the junk room. I tried to talk to her, but she locked herself in our room and ignored me. When I finally got her to talk to me, she basically listed everything I've done wrong in our relationship. This past week has been horrible. She wouldn't take me to work when it was snowing, so I had to take myself and my car got stuck twice. I missed two days of work because of her pettiness. I really didn't think I was the jerk here, but I tried to justify and explain myself. I did admit I was trying to teach her a lesson and we broke up. When I got home from work, she had all my belongings in boxes by the front door and I guess that's that. I really don't think I was the jerk, but obviously that's why I posted here. Everybody that wanted us to break up, you got what you wanted. I'm not sure if my update is too relationship based, so if it gets taken down, I apologize. You're the jerk OP for more than one reason. 1. If you were embarrassed by what she was wearing, that's a you problem. It's not up to you to teach anyone a lesson. 2. She was doing you a favor by carting your ungrateful self to work in the first place. Regardless of what she was wearing, you think it was your responsibility to teach her a lesson about anything? You should have pumped the gas for her. 3. Not content with shaming her appearance and taking it upon yourself to teach her a lesson, that was not your responsibility to teach. You also demanded she stop to get you food Though I note with interest you weren't so concerned about her appearance then. I love that she drove off and left you. Your brother is correct. She didn't deserve that treatment from you and you don't deserve her. You're the jerk. She was doing you the favor of picking you up at work and you thought, what if I publicly humiliate her and force her to freeze while she pumps gas? I hope that when you got home, she broke up with you. Entitled mom shreds my $30 card because I wouldn't give it to her 10-year-old son. I, 21 male was at the local game shop today to sell my Magic the Gathering card. This happened yesterday. I had just finished talking to the owner to sell my card when Entitled Mom walked up to the counter I was at with her son. Entitled Mom, You should give that card to my son. You are too old to play with cards. Me, Ma'am, if you had approached me earlier, I would have traded or sold the card to him, but I've already made a deal with the store. No, you're an adult. 
You should just give this card to my son. At this point, I look at her son. He's a kid. I should also mention that the card I am selling is a Foil Olivia Crimson Bride Showcase. For those that don't know, this card is kind of bum chicka wow wow for a magic card. Me. Ma'am, how old is your son? Entitled Mom. He's 10. How old are you? Me. I'm 21. I don't think this card is appropriate for his age. I show her the card just to make my point. No, it's fine. Just give it to him. Me. As I already said, I can't do that, as I've already committed to selling this shop my card. Here's the store owner. He cuts me off. Owner. Ma'am. If you want this card, you can buy it from us. No, if my son can't have this card, then you can't. At this point, she grabs the card from my hand, then all I hear is rip. I look at the woman and the torn card in her hands. I now start ripping into her, losing it. While I'm doing this, the store owner calls the cops. They arrive five minutes later. First thing the cops do is separate me and Entitled Mom before getting our statements. The owner also decides to pull the video of the incident. After the police have talked with me and the owner, they're starting to talk with Entitled Mom. Once they finish talking with her, they walk her out of the store and one of the officers talks to me and the owner. He tells us that this woman is going to be escorted from the premises and if the owner wants, they will be trespassed and no longer allowed at the store. This is when the owner says that he would like to do that and that the woman has caused issues for him in the past. The cop also says that the woman has been given a ticket for destruction of private property and disturbing the peace. The owner of the store then tells me that he will be going after her in court. He also gave me the money for my card, so that way he can add it to the amount he's trying to go after her for or claim it on insurance. He told me that he's going to try and sue her for harassment because she has done this in the past, the value of the card that she destroyed, and any legal fees needed to take her to court. Just married? Mother shall come stay. Mother dearest is insane. It was a bit of a ride when I got married. Husband is British, I'm Australian, and we live in England. Hence, all my loving and crazy family came from Oz for the big day. I'm one of four kids, and my family are breeders, whereas husband's family is small and significantly less crazy. They all came in dribs and drabs for our December wedding, leaving the warm tropical Aussie climate for negative 3 Celsius and December snow. Key information is that my mom buzzed off when I was three because she was tired of being a mom. So I was raised by the barrel-chested, swearing, but adorable pirate that is my father. Mother has the emotional maturity of a toddler and genuinely believes the world and her children adore her. We do not. Back to the wedding and the BS she pulled. We had organized events for the Australian contingent for the two weeks before the wedding, but not much for after as we were going to be newly married. I don't think I need to expand because most people understand that newlyweds generally want to spend time together. She arrived three weeks before the wedding and is annoyed that she is staying, for free, at my husband's parents' house, where my brother and his wife and daughter were also staying. She wanted to stay at my house, like my sister, who was my maid of honor. This was obviously ignored as she stresses me out, so she sat in the garden of my in-law's house and pouted like a child until we left, then made passive-aggressive posts on Facebook about being ignored and unloved after traveling so far, which I pettily laughed at because not a single person commented. Wedding day arrived. I wrote on an old account about her actions on the day before and day of our wedding. Namely, she tried to get back with my dad, who is definitely not interested, and then wore pajamas to our wedding reception. But it is what happened after that just irks me. She'd been staying with my in-laws for three weeks. She knew husband and I were going on our honeymoon the weekend after the wedding. She then asked the day after we were married for the keys to our house as she was going to house it while we were away. You what now? No, you are not accessing my house when I am not there. She then cries about how she booked to come to England for eight weeks because otherwise the cost of the tickets wasn't worth it. Again, what? All my other family had left the week after the wedding except my brother and his wife who instead traveled to London to see friends but they were still not coming back to see me. I point blank told her that she wasn't coming to my house while I wasn't there. Did I mention I got married in December? So Christmas is around the corner. She plays the family card about how she has never spent a Christmas with me and she will stay in a hotel but just wants to be with me on the day. I okay this. This is acceptable. Well done on doing a reasonable and rational thing, mother. But I did point out to her that the reason we didn't spend Christmas together was because she chose to buzz off on a yacht, so it's on her.
You know what wasn't acceptable? The day we got back from our honeymoon, she rocked up at the house and didn't leave for two weeks. Just what every husband wants on their return from their honeymoon. The world's most entitled and awful mother-in-law crashing their house and leaving fertility candles all over the joint while saying we are jerks because we won't talk about our private lives with her. She joined us at my in-law's house for Christmas. It started fine until on Christmas Eve I got a major case of stomach flu and started throwing up every 20 minutes. The first time I was sick, my mother-in-law rushed to the bathroom with water, a cool compress for my head and made sure I was okay. My own mother didn't get up from the sofa. I spent Christmas Day in bed, in agony with horrible cramps and regularly throwing up. My mother-in-law and husband took it in turns to check on me and keep me company. My mother only came to see me once, after Christmas dinner, to complain that my mother-in-law gave my husband the Yorkshire pudding that had been made for me, when she, as the real guest, should have been offered it. If I'd been able to throw up on her, I would have, but sadly I was just painfully retching at that point. I feel for my husband, I truly do. The poor man hid in our bedroom for two weeks, only venturing out when I told him the coast was clear. No stars, do not recommend. Support our channel by joining as a member today and we'll give you a shout out in our next video. Or come watch this video next, you won't believe what Karen does in that one.